So if we read the summary of chapter 2 here, it says, The next day you hooked up with Curry's cell phone batteries and tried activating her. You then spent the afternoon perfecting Curry's motor control and parts. As months passed, you became busy teaching Curry about the world through high school textbooks and taking her to the park. Your funding from NSF kept you and Professor Ziegler's good grace un during this time. In time, Mark Alley, a reporter from the San Francisco Chronicle, heard about Curry and asked for an interview. You agreed. So... I'm I'm kind of disappointed that IG is uh is mad at me, but to be honest, I I don't know what the hell I would do on Saturday, and uh, it's just annoying. Well, that's what happened anyway. So I've decided that it's time for you to graduate, Professor Ziegler says. Staple a few of your academic papers together and call it a thesis. Thank you, sir. You manage the only appropriate response for your advisor telling you that he's going to let you leave with a PhD. You figure you can decide later whether or not to follow his suggestion about the form your thesis will take. Meanwhile, I asked Captain Rogers to come here because it's a poor advisor who doesn't try to secure a job for his student after graduation. Mmm. 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 No. Mmm. Not. No. Mmm. -mm. He frowns and drums his fingers once more. We're off the academic job hunt cycle, but Captain Rogers has something else in mind for you. Captain Rogers nods. The service has been interested in autonomous technology for some time, and we would be honored to work out a way to collaborate. She looks at Professor Ziegler. By your leave, I would have a word in private with Ben. Professor Ziegler waves you away, and you walk out of the building with Captain Rogers. How are you feeling about her? I wonder if something more than friendship will develop between us. I expect to treat her with the same professional courtesy she shows me. I've never been comfortable around military, and I mistrust anyone Professor Ziegler would stick me with. Unfortunately, that's the route that I would have to go, because... I, I will... I would still treat them with professional courtesy. It's just the, the whole military aspect of it. That's not what I want for my robot. We'll just... We'll go with that, because if I say I'm going to mistrust them, it might make my dialogue seem more uneasy. I'm just going to, I'm going to trust, I'm not going to trust, I'm going to uh, converse professionally. You find your posture improving when you are around Captain Rogers. Her very presence makes you more conscious of your own manners. The day is bright and backpack wearing cyclists whiz past on their way to class. Sprinklers deluge the campus zoysia with so much water and the two of you must walk around the puddles they leave on the sidewalk. Professor Ziegler speaks highly of your technical abilities, says Captain Rogers. He said your work combines genius and artistry. Really? You try not to read too much into that statement. Professor Ziegler is trying to sell your work, after all. But a part of you wants to believe it. The Air Force is looking to make significant advances in robot technology, Juliet says. I'm kind of a talent scout, looking for new scientists and companies to form relationships with. She gives you a friendly but professional smile. If you're planning on starting a company after you finish your dissertation, I think we can offer you a contract right off the bat. Would you be willing to tell me whether my technology will be used to create killer robots? If you're guaranteeing the government will be will be my customer, I can hardly turn down the opportunity. Would you be willing to discuss this over dinner? No thanks, I'd rather not get involved in warfare. Well, see, the thing is, is that I don't have a problem with my technology that I wrote. For, it's really just the AI, honestly. It's it's the AI that they want from me. It, it That's what they should want from me. They don't need my original robot. I mean, the way that I designed it is you could teach each robot individually, and if you wanted the same of a robot, you could just copy over the existing program. But I don't want to write a contract with the military. I mean, if yes, I had a, if I had a company and they were like, we need some of your robots, clearly I'd be like, well, yeah, I can provide you with robots and I can teach you guys how to use them and stuff like that. But I don't want that to be like, well, yeah, I created this robot and I want them to be empathetic, so I'm going to immediately turn around and make robots that are going to be used for killing people. And I'm not looking at it as my robots. I'm creating things that are killing people. The robots that I'm creating are doing good work. They're defending... Well, they're defending my other robot. 
They're making it so that civilized life is possible and that other people don't actually have to die. I have nothing against building robots they can be used for military purposes. I just don't want to be sitting there getting my hands dirty, all greasy and stuff, creating robots that are going to be sent out and killing people. I don't want to be directly involved with that. I have no problem with allowing other people to work off of my work. Yeah, that's not saying were like stealing my ideas or things like that because realistically with the way that I have it it's it's designed for everybody you know what we need more time to discuss it Juliet smiles slightly I'm afraid I've got a work dinner tonight with some executives from Lockhead Lockheed believe me your offer is far more enticing she hesitates are you asking me in a formal capacity or is this a personal invitation it's it's formal Ah, Juliet says. Well, I'm afraid I'm busy this weekend, so I can't take you up on your offer. Thank you, though. Would you be willing to tell me whether my technology would be used to create killer robots? If you're guaranteeing me that, blah, 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 no thanks. Rather than I get a wolf. Uh, what is this? Juliet shrugs. I can't promise you anything. Information is highly compartmentalized in the arm in the armed services. But I can say that we need robots for all kinds of roles, not just fighting in the front lines. Well, yeah, you could use them as nurses and shit like that. As for the future, well, you never really know what results of science will be, do you? That's the exact thing, is that no matter what, my robots are going to be end up used for that. But it's it's just the prospect of working for the government to create these things. And I know that the the fame isn't really an important aspect of it, but I don't want to be known as the guy that creates killer robots. And although I know that I'm not creating those just the fact that other people can hate me for it not knowing that that's not what I originally intended them for or they might call me a sellout for then going over and doing that it's not my intent to make them that way but it's going to happen no matter what if I have to be the person that's going to lose a bit of it or lose a bit of my face or yeah not not my literal face but if I have to become the bad guy to be the to be the real good guy, then I'm fine with that. The only problem is is that I really don't like the idea of working for the government. And I have no problem with the warfare aspect of it. I would love to be able to sit there and give speculations on the different things that they're going to be putting on my robots and stuff like that, and calibrating them for that. So you know, you know what? Fuck it. Fine. Good. What will the name of your company be? What will you call your company? Curryworks, Tesla Tech, Ben's Universal Robots, Singularity. Uh, fuck it, we'll go with Singularity. Because that, yeah, that's what the, the point is, is to get Curry to be a Singularity. Singularity, got it. She offers her hand. It's a, It's been a pleasure, Ben. We'll be in touch. She gives you her card, an, anachron, an anachronism in this age of digital, digital business card and bids you well, farewell. What will you do this evening? Try to improve Curry's social graces before she goes out in public again. Improve Curry's self-defense in case someone tries to attack her. I prefer to give myself some quiet time to read. I, I don't know what the hell I'm supposed to read. I'm going to go read Shakespeare or some shit like that. I'm going to go talk with Curry. Let's do a little role. Oh, let's do a little role playing. You tell Curry. Pretend I'm a reporter. Do you have any plans to take over the world or replace human beings? Curry lets out a robotic whimper. Are they really going to say that? Maybe. You prepare Curry for some of the more aggressive questions reporters might ask. After a little while, Curry does understand a, a bit better how not how cruel people can be. Okay, well, that's the thing, though, is that I want to teach her how cruel people can be, but if I'm the one sitting there asking questions, she has to understand that I'm the one sitting there asking the questions in place of some actual person who really thinks that way. The next morning, you drive with Curry to see to San Jose to meet Tammy at Dunkin' Donuts. There's a lot of product placement in this one. I wonder if this guy actually got paid for that. Uh-oh, now he's coming for me. Tammy is a very thin woman with wild blonde hair who can't seem to stop drumming her fingers and shaking her legs, her leg under the table. At your entrance, she turns to you quickly, startled. But at your arrival, she breaks into a broad smile and waves excitedly 
to the opposite chair. You oblige Tammy and take a seat. Curry drags her child's booster seat next to you and awkwardly situates herself there. So it's like three feet tall, about this tall. Yeah, very small robot. Thank you for coming, Tammy says, and bringing Curry. No problem, you say. Curry, say hello. Hello. You can tell this has an effect on Tammy. She seems delighted by Curry's natural charm and grace. Hello, Curry, Tammy says softly. She suddenly turns to you. You're beautiful, she stammers suddenly. How do you feel about Tammy at first sight? I find myself really attracted to her. She's a loner like me. I know how it feels to be an outsider. We might be friends. I sort of feel sorry for her, but I certainly wouldn't date her. Let's make this short, sweet, and hit the road. And, and yeah, I know it's like... Thank you, you say politely. Tammy recognizes that she has overstepped. Sorry. You consider what you want to say to Tammy. Go ahead, talk to Curry some more. I'm sure you two will hit it off. It's nice to find someone who likes robots as much as I do. Tell me more about yourself. I'm kind of in a rush, but please tell me your life story while I chug my coffee. That would be a really douchey response. I feel like that would be, like, if I was a military person, I'd be like, yeah, whatever, tell me what you need to know. Tell me what you need to know. Ask me what you need to know, or tell me about yourself, whatever, whatever. Go ahead and talk to Curry. You encourage Tammy to talk to Curry instead of you, giving Curry some practice in holding up one end of the conversation. What would you like to talk about, Tammy? Curry asks. What, it, what is it like to be a robot? Tammy asks. It's pretty sweet. What's it like being a Tammy? <laughs> Your tactic appears to put Tammy more at ease. You remi you're reminded of some early research that encouraged autistic children to learn social skills from robots instead of people. You wonder if a similar principle is at work here. Tammy tells you and Curry that she used to work for a mechanical engineer for a government contractor that produced autonomous drones for the government. Just cleared secretly, nothing major, she said. She says, as if this level of access to classified information were not a big deal. But her clearance put her in an awkward middle ground where she knew just enough to make her paranoid about the government's intended use for the drones. She believed, but could not prove, that they would be put to some bad use that she could not talk about. She swears, I forgot to turn my turn off my phone. Please, turn off your cell phone if you have it on. I'm not saying anything classified, but just in case. You're right, someone could be spying on us. Sure, why not? Uh, yeah, okay. Nobody's listening to us. Pull yourself together. Sure, why not? I have no problem with turning off my phone. You oblige Tammy, reaching your pocket and power down your phone. Tammy can tell you don't believe her, but seems relieved that you're at least willing to go along with it. Anyway, I quit my job because I just couldn't take it anymore, not knowing what my work would be applied to. I've always loved robots. It just seems... Like it's hard to find a job in robotics that doesn't involve working for a military contractor. Damn straight. That's why I was so excited to read the article. Because surely someone as amazing as you was going to start a world-changing company like Google or Apple. Or all those other companies that settled in Silicon Valley garage. Started in a Silicon Valley garage. So I was wondering, do you think you could offer me a job, your robot company? Sure, you can come work for Singularity. Submit your resume, email an address and we'll see what happens. Oh, so I'm either going to say, yes, you can like, work for my company, or I can be like, yeah, but, oh no! No, that is a lie! So that's literally being like, yeah, sure, apply. Yeah, I'm going to ignore it. I don't want to say, sure, you can work for Singularity right away. This, I mean, this is, it's an informal meeting that we're having, but the thing is, is that she, she comes to me as more somebody who understands what's going on, yet she's looking for work. And the thing is, is that I have no problem with considering her, actually considering her, not this stupid lie bullshit that's up here on my screen. I, I would consider it. The thing is, is that there's no option for that. It's either, yeah, you're going you're gonna to work for me, or go fuck yourself, basically. Yeah, okay, so Tammy is there. Tammy looks very excited at the prospect. Oh, thank you very much. When do you want me to start? Er, soonish, you say? I'll let you know. Oh, thank you so much. She seems nearly moved to tears. You and Curry say your goodbyes to Tammy. That afternoon, you glance outside your window and see Tammy skulking behind a hedge across the street as if she is casing your place. But she catches sight of you, pretends to pick something up from the ground, then puts her hands in her pockets and wishes 
whistles as she casually walks to her BMW, starts up the engine, and drives away. Okay. That night, you stay in your apartment, exhausted from the events of the past two days, while Curry spends her time gobbling more information from high school textbooks. So that's plus autonomy, because I didn't actually go out. So that was Saturday right there. Right? Yeah? Okay, then that was Saturday. You spend the next few weeks as you write your thesis for graduate, for graduate school, unsupervised learning and the Curry architecture. When you finally defend your thesis, Mark, Mom, Dad, and Curry are all there at your final presentation. Even Tammy came, though you're not sure how she found out about it. At the school's reception for fresh doctorates, Mom jokes, So do I have to call you Dr. Tesla now? You demur. But it is what the stats screen calls you now. Yeah, okay, it's saying refer to the stats screen. So I go, yep, Dr. Dr. Tesla. Yes, doc, Dr. Tesla. I couldn't call, I didn't want to put it my, in my actual last name. I didn't feel like it would be right, so I just chose the default last name, which is Tesla. All right, anyway, let's go ahead and see what Dr. Tesla is going to do next time.